Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can make this little robot just using some very simple techniques that you've learned so far um, and a little bit about how to assign colors and materials and render an image. And hopefully that should give you the kickstart you need to be able to make whatever else you want. And we'll start with this cube, which is going to be his body. And we'll move it up by pressing G and then Z. We don't want it to be a perfect cube, so I'm just going to squish it down with S and Z. Um, and now we want a head. So we can add a new cube. Move it up with G and Z. And scale it. And move it with G and Z. Um, and now I want a leg, so Shift A. Add another cube. And then I want this to be long and thin. So I'm going to scale it and then press Shift Z, which will mean it scales on all axes apart from Z. So there we have a leg. And then I'm going to move it up with G and Z. Scale it down a bit. Move it across and X. And now I want to duplicate the leg so I don't have to remake it again exactly the same. So to do that, I'll press Shift D to duplicate, then press X to lock that movement to the X axis, and move it here. And now I want two arms, so I'll duplicate the leg again with the Shift D and move it across by pressing X, then click G Z. GX, then duplicate with Shift D, and then press X and move it to the other side. And now I want some eyes. So for the eyes, I'm going to use a cylinder. So I'll do Shift A, add mesh cylinder, and then I'm going to scale it down with S. Then I'm going to rotate it with R and then X. And I'm going to move it with G. Just rotate it so it's at the right angle. Scale it up a bit. Move it with G. And there we go. I think that's about right. So I'll duplicate that with Shift D, move it along with X. And I've got two eyes, and I want a pupil in the eye. So I'll just duplicate the eye, scale it down, move it, scale, just scaling and moving until it's in the right place, and then I'll duplicate X. There we go, there's two eyes. Um, let's add a mouth. So that will be another cube. Scale it down. Then scale on the X axis by pressing S and then X. Then I'm going to move it with G into the right place. And there we have a mouth. And I want to give him an antenna. So I will add a mesh cylinder and move it up with G and Z. Scale it down. And if I press Shift Z, that will scale it on all axes apart from Z. So I want it to be thin, about that thin. And I'll just scale it down on the Z axis to, to be about the right length. And I want to add a little bobble on top of the antenna. So I'll do Shift A and add a UV sphere. Scale it down, G and Z. 
scale it a bit. There we go. Now I want these to be shaded smooth, so I'll right click and shade smooth. Same for the eyes. You could shade the body smooth, but it will look a bit weird like this because it doesn't have much geometry, so I'll just leave it as a shade flat. Now we'll add a floor, which is a mesh plane, just a flat plane. And I haven't put his feet in the right place, so I'll press G and Z and just move the floor so it's there. Now we want to add some color, so how do we do that? At the moment we've just been looking in the solid viewport, which everything is gray and the same color. We can go to wireframe, which shows the geometry. And the next one along is material preview. This might take a second to load the first time you do it, so don't worry about that. Now you can see that everything is white, and that's because nothing has been assigned uh, a color yet, and everything just has the default material. Now every object in Blender can have a material, which is basically finds what the color of it is, whether the surface is rough or smooth or bumpy or any or transparent or any kind of property you can think of for any material in the real world. Now we want uh, the main color of the body to be blue. So I'll just click on the body and then come over to the right. And this is the material pa uh, properties panel. And you can see there's already a material assigned to it just the default material, and the base color is white. We want the, to change the base color to light, some kind of light blue. Now if we go to the head, we could make a new material here, but ideally we want to share the same material that we've already created for the body, so that we don't, when we change one thing on the body, we'll change in everything else. So to do that, we'll click here, and select the material that we've already made. And why don't we rename it by double clicking on the name and we'll rename it blue. So we can assign it to the arms in the same way. Click on the arm and the legs. Um, I want the mouth to be black, so I'll create a new material now by clicking new. Change the base color to black. And I want the antenna to be that same color as well. So I'll click on it, browse, material, and I'll rename it black. I want the pupils of the eyes to be red. So I'll add a new material and make it red. Select the other pupil, rename it red. And I want the top bubble on the antenna to also be that same red color. Now I can make a color for the floor, add a new material, let's make it sort of orangey red. So now we've selected the colors and materials, um, let's look at rendering. So if you click this button, it changes the viewport shading into rendered view. And now we can see the light is actually having an influence on the scene. It's lighting up this area and it's casting a shadow like this. So instead of a point light, I want it to be a sun, which is going to cast a light in one direction from an infinite distance away across the whole scene. As you can see, that's way too bright. So instead of strength 1000, I'll make it strength 10. And I want to change the angle. I'll press R to rotate, just so it's lit from the front. And another way we can light the scene is by changing the world, world properties. The, the default world color is this dark gray. If I make it lighter, it also lights up the scene in the kind of ambient light. And you can change the color and that will also change the color of the lighting in the scene. So I want it to be slightly off-white. I think that looks nice. So how do we render an image? That's what the camera is for. At the moment it's just looking down here. So we can see what the camera is seeing by pressing toggle camera view or shortcut numpad zero. 
and you can see the camera just looking uh, at nothing basically. So you want to move the camera with G and rotate it so it's pointing at what we're looking at. We could check what the camera is seeing like so. And if we come to the camera settings, we can change the focal length, which um, if you know anything about photography or cameras, um, you know what that means. But effectively, the longer the focal length, the more zoomed in it is, but also the flatter the image appears. So if you want a fisheye effect, you set the focal length very low. And you get this fisheye effect. And if you want a zoom lens effect, zoom lens effect, set the focal length very high. I happen to like the look of images with the long focal length, so I'm going to set it to 150, roughly. And I want the image to be framed inside the camera, and an easy way to do that is opening another window in the viewport. So how do we do that? If I move my cam uh, my cursor to the top right of the window, you get this little crosshair that appears. And click and drag. And now I'm opening a new window. And by default, it copies the same window that you've, you've already got open. So I want this to be my camera view. So I'll just press toggle the camera view here. And now I'm looking through the camera. And this frame is the border of the image. And if I move the camera in this view on the z-axis, if I press z twice, it moves on the local z-axis, and that's useful for moving back. And move the camera back and frame the object, frame the character inside the view. And switch to render view so I can see. And maybe I want the, the floor to be bigger, so it takes up the whole image. And I can move the camera around. Rotate it on the z-axis to get a more interesting view. And I'm going to pose the character a bit by rotating his arms and legs so it looks like he's walking. And when we want to render the image, come up to the top left, click on render, and render image. And that will pop open a new window, and you'll see the rendered image. And you can go to image, save as, to save that image to your files, which you should do for every render you make, just as a record of what you've done. I hope that was helpful, and I hope this robot is the first in many renders you'll make in Blender and that you've got some confidence in making your own things now. You know what the tools are and you're a bit less afraid about opening up Blender and being confused by all the buttons. Um, happy blending. Bye.